Welcome everyone. In this lesson, we are going to begin by setting up our project. We'll be setting up our folder structure and importing some assets. So first of all, what I'm going to do is go down to our project browser. And as you can see, I've got a brand new Unity project opened up right now. And I'm going to create a few folders. First of all, I'm going to create a folder called materials, as this is where we're going to be storing some custom made materials, uh, such as the teleport indicator. We then need to create a, another folder here called prefabs. This is where we'll be storing all of our prefabs, such as our different objects that we can pick up. We need to create another folder then for the scripts. We're not going to have too many scripts. We are going to have some. They're not required in learning the toolkit, but they will just add to the project, such as being able to tip a bottle upside down and see particles coming out. And one more folder is going to be models. And this is where we're going to be storing our 3D models. Now let's open up that models folder here and included with the course is a zip file download that contains the assets. Okay. So if you extract the zip, you should have a folder called models folder contents. And inside of that, we have a lot of different uh, 3D models that have to do with food or food utensils. And these come from the Kenny.nl website, which is a website where you can get free open domain assets. Okay. And it's great for if you're wanting to jump into game development, but you don't necessarily have the uh, artistic skills. Okay. So I'm just going to select all of these 3D models right here and drag them into our project into the models folder. That's going to go through the process of importing all of these right now. And now that they've all imported, what we're going to do is I'm going to scroll down and we should see here that there is a 3D model called table. Okay. This is a custom model that I made for the project. And with this 3D model, what we want to do is in the inspector here, we just want to go to where it says generate colliders and enable that. This basically means once we actually drag this into our scene, it's going to automatically set up mesh colliders on this object. So we don't have to go through and manually create those. Okay. Click on the apply button to apply those changes. And then what we also need to do is go ahead and select every single, uh, every single model here inside of the folder. So I'm going to go to the bottom one, hold down shift, click on the first one. As you can see, they are all selected except for the table. Okay. So what I'm going to do is hold down control or command if you're on a Mac and click on the table model to deselect it. So right now we have every single 3d model except for our table selected. And what I'm going to do is go up to where we have the scale factor. And this is basically the scale of the model by default. It's one and I'm going to set it to 0.5. That just gives us a much more realistic uh, scale of these 3d models when working in VR. Okay. I'm going to hit apply. It's going to apply that change to every single model here, giving it a scale factor of 0.5, basically halving its size. And there we go. So that is our models set up and ready to go. Now in the next lesson, we are going to go through the process of actually, uh, installing the XR interaction toolkit. So I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to go over how we can actually install the XR interaction toolkit. So the XR interaction toolkit, first of all, is Unity's uh, built in package, which allows us to easily create uh, VR components such as uh, VR rigs, hand controllers, teleporting, movement, turning, picking up objects, interacting with stuff, all without needing to touch code. Okay. This is all done by using game objects and components. So. How do we install this? Well, I'm going to go up to window here and I'm going to select the package manager. Now inside of the package manager, this is basically a window where we can download uh, extra packages for unity. And what I'm going to do is at the top left where it says packages in project, I'm going to select that and choose unity registry. Okay. This is all the available packages that unity gives us that we can install on top of our uh, existing engine. Now, the reason why they're not all in the engine by default is because that would mean each project will have a very large file size. So unity allows us to choose which packages we want, uh, depending on what project we're making. Now the XR interaction toolkit, as of the time that this is being recorded is still in a preview state. This basically means it is not an officially released package, uh, but it will still work and we'll still be able to use it with no problems. 
Now, to be able to see preview packages, we have to click on the gear icon at the top right of the package manager and go advanced project settings. Now, inside of the project settings window, we should be in the package manager tab. What I'm gonna do is just enable preview packages. Click I understand, and we can then close out of that. Now, as you can see, we can see that uh, some of these packages have the preview tag next to them. This basically means that they're a preview package and they have not been officially or fully released. Now for XR Interaction Toolkit, we can scroll to the bottom of this list and you should see it right here. So we got the XR Interaction Toolkit. What we want to do is click on the install button right here. And that is gonna begin installing the XR Interaction Toolkit into our project. It shouldn't take too long as it's not that large of a file size. So once it is done, I'll be right back. Okay, so once the download has complete, you'll see this pop-up window appear. Uh, now, this is just warning us that we're going to be using the new input system from Unity and that we require a restart. So you wanna just click on yes. This is going to basically restart your Unity project. Don't worry, it's gonna open up back again and we'll be right back in just a second. And there we go, we're back again and the XR Interaction Toolkit has been installed. You can tell that by going to the bottom right, it should have a remove button. Okay, so now along with this, we also need to install the XR Plugin Management uh, package right here. And this just allows us to then be able to actually publish on all the various different XR devices like the Oculus Rift, the Vive, uh, the Index and so on, okay? So like before, we can go ahead and click on the install button right here to install this package. Now, as of recording, installing this package, you'll see here gives us some errors inside of our console, okay? Uh, now to fix this, what we can do is actually go ahead and remove this package. So I'm gonna click on the remove button right here. Now, if, this, if these errors are not occurring for you, that's fine, but uh, for some versions, this may happen. I'm gonna click on remove right here. And what we're gonna be doing is installing a previous version of the XR plugin management package, okay? So to do that, you'll see here that next to the uh, selection, we have a little drop down arrow. We can click on that and here you'll see, uh, see other versions, we'll click on that. And we can see all the various different versions of this package. Now I'm gonna click on the one previous to the one we just done, 3.2.16 and I'm gonna install that instead. And hopefully those errors will then uh, go away as that seems to be a problem with the most recent version of this package. And there you go. So we can then close out of the package manager here and we have the XR Interaction Toolkit now installed. In the next lesson, we're gonna go and set up our first XR rig, okay? And then straight away, we'll be able to hop in and test it out in VR. So I'll see you all then in the next lesson. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are gonna be creating our XR rig. Now an XR rig is basically the structure of ourselves in VR, okay? It defines where we are in 3D space, where our head is, which is the camera, where our hands are, and basically how we can then interact and move around the world, okay? So think of the XR rig as your player game object. So. What we need to do first of all is actually have something to stand on as we are in an empty scene right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to right click in the hierarchy and create a new 3D plane game object here. And this is gonna be our floor. I'm gonna set the position to be 000, so it's nice and centered and rename this to be ground. Uh, now we're gonna make it a bit larger. So I'm gonna set the scale to five along all of the axes right here. And what we then need to do is go ahead and create a material because when it comes to like flat materials like this in VR, it can be quite hard to sort of um, understand where you are in 3D space. If you look at the ground and it is the exact same color, exact same basically texture along the whole surface. So we're going to add a bit of texture here. So let's go into our materials folder, right click, create a brand new material here called ground. Now this ground material, we're gonna have a texture that uh, already comes with Unity. So I'm gonna drag this ground material onto our plane right here. Looks no different just yet. Uh, but over here in the inspector, I'm gonna click on the little dot next to our Beto, which is basically what the thing actually looks like. And I'm gonna select this default checkered uh, gray right here. 
And as you can see, we now have this texture applied to our material, but it's quite large. So let's try and tile it a bit. Uh, so I'll click on the material and under tiling, I'm going to set this to be 50 by 50. We now have this texture repeated 50 times along each length. So now when we're standing here, we can physically see, okay, if I move my head over here or if I move over here a bit, I'm actually moving in 3D space. Uh, so that's really good to have it actually texture below your feet inside of VR. Now you can see how the lighting is a bit off. Uh, it's a bit yellowy, a bit dark. And the reason why is because by default, Unity has uh, its automatic light generation off. So what we need to do is turn that on. So at the bottom right of the screen, I'm gonna click on this button right here and that is gonna open up the lighting window. And inside of the lighting window here, all we want to do is go to the scene tab here and select auto generate down at the bottom. Okay, that's gonna begin the process of automatically generating our lights. We can close out of this and there we go. Now it's a bit bright, so I'm gonna turn the smoothness down on the material so that it's not reflective. Now along with this, we might also want to actually um, change the color a bit, maybe make it a bit darker. We may be wanting them bump up the smoothness a bit. There we go. So it kind of looks like kitchen tiles. Okay, so now what we can do is actually start introducing our XR rig. So before we do that, let's delete the existing main camera here in our scene since we won't be needing that. And what I'm gonna do is right click inside of the hierarchy, uh, or you can go to where the game object tab here, go XR, and then here is where you are gonna see all of the different XR game objects that we can add to our project. Okay, we have array indicators, uh, grab in interactables, uh, managers, we have teleportation areas, and UI things. Okay, what we want to do is go over to where it says device based, and here is where we can choose room scale XR rig or stationary XR rig. Now in VR, you have two different types of uh, basically experiences. You have stationary and room scale. Stationary uh, VR is where you can only rotate your head around, okay? It does not track the position of your head. Now this can be found in devices such as mobile VR and the Oculus uh, Go. Whereas room scale VR, most VR headsets have that now. If your VR headset has cameras on it or if it has trackers, then that means it's room scale. That means you can actually move your head around and it can track the position of you inside your room. So for this example here, we're gonna go with room scale XR rig and that is gonna create two things. First of all, it created an XR interaction manager game object and you need one of these in your scene if you do want to have interactions with the XR components and it created an XR rig game object right here. Now I'm gonna set the position of this to be zero, 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 so it is centered in the world, okay? Now with this XR rig, we have the main parent game object, which has the XR rig uh, component attached to it. And this basically just keeps track of all the various different game objects uh, that we need. And the tracking origin mode, which we have set to floor. So basically uh, the, the, the origin, the starting point is gonna be at your feet where you set the floor in your headset, okay? Now, as a child of the XR rig, we have the camera offset, and this is basically where we have the camera and the hands as children. So if we open this up, you'll see we have the main camera, and this is what we're gonna be seeing inside of basically the VR world. And attached to this camera, we have a tracked pose driver component. And the track pose driver component basically allows this camera to move if the headset moves and rotate if the headset rotates. Basically, whatever action happens to the headset gets applied to the main camera, okay? Then we have the same for the left hand and the right hand here. Now, these hands have a number of different components, as you can see. First of all, we have the XR controller device-based component. And this is basically the main component that manages the XR controller. Uh, here we can choose if you want to track it or not. So by default, we probably do. Then we can choose the input types. So basically, if we want to grab something, what button do we want to press? And that is what we use for select usage right here. As you can see, there are a lot of different universal inputs. What this means is that Unity behind the scenes uh, has a library of all the various different VR controllers and their button layouts, and it has applied universal definitions to sort of like the main 
uh, buttons. So the grip button would be the Oculus button that you have with your middle finger. For the Vive, that would probably be the trigger. And doing it this way basically makes it so that it is a lot easier for us to develop inside of VR. We don't have to specifically define what we want each button on each possible VR controller to do. We can just say, okay, I want the grip button to do this. And Unity is going to go, okay, you're using the Oculus controller, so the grip button is this. You're using a index controller, so the grip button is this. We don't have to specifically define uh, what button we want for the Oculus, what button we want for the Vive, for the index. Unity does it all behind the scenes. Uh, along with this, we also have a model right here. You can choose if you want to instantiate a prefab on top of this, such as hands. We're just going to be using simple cubes for our hands. We then have the XR Ray Interactor, and this is uh, what we use in order to basically have a pointer. Okay, so you'll see that if we were to play this, our hands would have a line pointing out from it, and this allows us to basically uh, select objects, pick them up, and later on allow us to also teleport around the world. So we have a line renderer to actually render that line, and a XR Interactor line visual, which is basically defining the look of this line. Okay, and the exact same thing is for the right hand as well. Now, how do we go about actually testing this out inside of Unity? Well, if you have a desktop VR headset and it's working on your computer already, you should just be able to press play and see it in action. Now, I'm using an Oculus Quest 2, so what I'm going to do is go edit, I'm going to go down to project settings, and inside of project settings, I'm going to go to the XR plugin management tab right here and I'm going to select the Oculus uh, selection right here. So it's going to import some of the Oculus uh, packages so that basically it knows that I want to run this on an Oculus device. As of now, Unity doesn't have support for OpenVR, which is what the Valve products use. Uh, so I'm going to select Oculus here. Also in mobile, just uh, since we're here, I'm going to select Oculus as well and close out of project settings. So now what we can do is go ahead make sure our device is set up and working and we can press play and here you go as you can see I can look around inside of VR with my headset I have my hand right here which is a red line right now as well as my left hand over there which can also move around but I'm just using one hand at the moment here and yep yeah, so basically we have our VR rig working I can move my head around I can rotate it up down right left same for my hand as well. So that is great. Our VR rig is working and set up and ready to go. In the next lesson, we are going to be looking at how we can actually set up the Oculus Quest 2 so that we can uh, test it out inside of the Unity editor when we press play. Okay, this is going to involve connecting it to our computer and modifying a few settings. Now, if you don't have an Oculus Quest 2, then feel free to skip over the next lesson. Hey everyone, in this lesson, I'm going to show you how you can get your Oculus Quest 2 set up and working so you can actually test it out inside of the Unity editor, okay? Uh, normal desktop VR headsets can do this pretty much automatically, but there's a bit more of a setup when it comes to setting up the Oculus Quest 2, okay? So first of all, what we need to do is download the Oculus software onto our computer. So if you go to oculus.com slash setup, You'll see getting started in VR right here. And where it says Oculus Quest 2 or Oculus Quest 1, if that's what you're using, you can go down here and download the software. And this is going to download an installer and then you'll be able to begin the installation process. Now, this is a quite a large file size. I believe it's around eight or so gigabytes. So that may take some time to download. But once that is complete, once you have logged into your account and set up everything, you'll be here inside of the Oculus Quest software. Now, inside of the software, you first of all want to go to devices right here and just make sure that your device is plugged into your computer and it is being detected. If it's not, you can go ahead and click add a headset to go through the process of setting it up. Okay, so then what we want to do is go over to the settings tab here and click on the general tab up here. Now, inside of this screen here, we want to enable unknown sources. Okay, so make sure unknown sources is enabled. This basically allows it so that, okay, uh, our headset is able to run programs and applications that are not from the official Oculus Store. And that's what we need if we are wanting to basically install our Unity games onto our headset. 
Now, when you also connect your headset, you'll see actually inside of the device, it'll ask you if you want to allow uh, this computer to basically access files. For that, you just wanna go ahead and click on allow. And that should then allow you to actually connect the headset properly. So now what we need to do is go over to Unity right here. And what we want to do is click on the play button, okay? Make sure your headset is connected to your computer. And if you look in the headset now, you may see something that pops up saying, uh, allowing you to enable Oculus Link, which is basically how we are gonna be seeing what our computer has on our headset device. So if that pops up, click on enable. This may only pop up if you press the play button. So let's go ahead and do that now. I'm gonna press play. Uh, and here we are inside of VR. So we have a headset working. You should be able to see it inside the device. You can move around, you can move your arms, and there we go. So it's working. Uh, so do make sure that you have basically allow this computer to uh, access your files. So that is how we can basically preview our games on our Oculus Quest 2 headset. Now, what about actually building it to the device? How do we actually uh, build this game to our Unity or to our Oculus device? Well, to do that, we first of all have to go up to File, Build Settings, and inside of Build Settings here, we want to click on Add Open Scenes to add the current scene to the build list. And we want to switch over to the Android platform since the Oculus Quest uh, is an Android device. Now, if you don't have the Android uh, platform installed, you'll have to go over to the Unity Hub, go to Installs, and basically uh, make sure that you have installed the Android package. Once that's the case, we can go ahead and click on the switch platform button down here, and it's gonna switch our project over to Android. And there we go. You can see at the top of the screen here, it now says Android in the header right here. And what we also need to do is make sure that Unity can actually detect our device. So here in the build settings screen where it says run device, click on where it says default device, and you should see your Oculus Quest 2 headset pop up right here. So you can just select that. And then we want to go to the player settings. So we can click on the button here at the bottom left to go open up our project settings window. And here's where we can basically fill in some information. First of all, company name, I'm gonna call this one Zenva. For product name, this is basically what we want the application to be called. I'm just gonna call this uh, XR Test Unity. Uh, we can then go ahead to other settings down here and inside of other settings, you wanna scroll down to where we have the package name. Now, this package name is basically a unique identifier for this specific application. Uh, so the way it's normally done is you have name. So I'm gonna go com.zenva. And then I'm just gonna give it something such as XR test in Unity. Okay, there we go. Uh, everything else should be fine. So we can go ahead and close out of this screen here. And then what we want to do is click the build and run button right here. Okay, build and run. We can then choose a location to store this APK file on. I'm just gonna keep it in our XR interaction toolkit project right here. I'm gonna call this one app, hit save. And it's, it's going to begin building our project. And once it is complete, it will then transfer it over to our headset and launch it up. So once this download is complete, once you see the uh, console messages saying it has been completed successfully and it has been loaded onto our device, you can then pick up your device and play the game. And there we go, the build successfully been completed and now on your Oculus Quest device, you should see that you have the application launching. Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, we are going to be looking at how we can set up interactable objects. And by that, what I mean is objects that we can pick up, throw, and basically just use, okay? So first of all, we need a table to put all these objects on. So in the models folder, I'm gonna scroll down to where we have the table model right here and drag that into the scene. Okay, now with this table, what we want to do is first of all, rotate it 180 degrees. Since our camera is facing in the forwards direction, that means that we want to have the table flipped around. So I'll set the Y rotation on the table to be 180 and I'm gonna move it along the Z 0 0.8. Okay, so it's just in front of our XR rig right here. Now with this table, uh, it should have all of the colliders added by default since we did enable that on the model's settings. So there's, it is fully uh, collidable now. 
And what we want to do then is basically set up our grab objects. So what I'm going to do for this, I'm going to go ahead and right click here in the hierarchy, go XR, and I'm going to go to where it says grab interactable. Okay, this is going to create ourselves an empty game object with three components. We have a rigid body, which basically allows it so this object can have physics. We have an XR grab interactable, which is what manages basically grabbing this object, uh, determining how it tracks to our hand, what happens when we throw it, etc. And we then have a sphere collider, which we can, which we are going to be changing to a box collider. So first of all, let's get this centered at zero, zero, zero right here, and let's give it a 3D model as a child, so we can actually see what this object is. So over in the assets, I'm going to go to models and I'm just going to find a random 3D model here that we can apply to it. Uh, let's maybe give it this knife right here. So I'm going to drag it in as a child, make sure the position is 000, zero, zero. and selecting the grab interactable, I'm going to pick it up and move it over to the table right here. Okay, I'm going to put it down so it's just sitting on the table like so, it doesn't have to be exact, it's going to fall down of course when we press play. And first thing what we want to do is get rid of this sphere collider since this does not match the shape. So I'm going to right click on sphere collider here, go remove components, and I'm going to instead add in a box collider. Now with this box collider, uh, I'm going to go into a top view here, press F to focus in on the object, click on the little square here at the top right to go orthographic, and we can then click on in the box collider component, click on the edit collider button right here, and this is going to allow us to actually uh, modify the collider's size here. So basically just reform this collider to the bounds of the knife. Uh, can be a bit rough, doesn't have to be exact. Uh, just has to basically, the basic collisions for when it collides with stuff here. Make sure that this is all connecting properly. There we go. So we've got our knife collider set up right here. And one more thing that we have to do is set up an attach transform. Okay, this basically defines where on the object are we going to be grabbing it by. Okay, because right now, the way we have it uh, by default is that when we grab this object, it is going to grab it at the center position. So right now, right at the center of the blade here is where we're going to be holding it, which isn't that nice. So instead, what we're going to do is as a child of grab interactable, I'm going to create a new empty game object called attach transform. And actually I'm going to rename our grab interactable to not have a space between grab and interactable like so. And on the attach transform, we want to basically move this to where we want our hand to be. So we probably want our hand down on the uh, actual grip right here. So I'll move it there. We then select the grab interactable and in the XR grab interactable component, we want to drag this in to the attach transform property right here, okay? So basically when we pick this object up, our hand is going to be on this transform position right here. Now also what we need to keep in mind is the direction, okay? So once we pick up this object, we're actually going to be picking it up on an angle. And the way this works is basically if you were to hold an object and stick your thumb up, that is going to be the positive Y direction. That's going to be the up direction. Now by default, the up direction is facing upwards, so we don't want that. Instead, we want the up direction facing towards the blade. So I'm going to turn on local rotation or local uh, space right here. I'm going to press E and I'm going to rotate this ni negative 90 degrees. So we can just put negative 90 on the Z right here. And you should see that the Y axis is now pointing towards the blade with the blue facing forward, which is what we want. Okay, so we can save that. And now it's pretty much working. So we can go ahead, press play, and test this out. Now, you may have also seen that once we actually let go of the object, sometimes it'll just fall straight through the desk. And the reason why is because on our grab interactable, what we need to do is change the collision detection, okay? So collision detection on our rigid body component basically defines how it detects collisions. By default, it's discrete, which is the cheapest form of detecting collisions. But what we want to do is change it over to continuous. This will basically make collision detection better uh, at the cost of a little bit of performance, okay? But really, it shouldn't be that bad if we only have a few items. So we'll test that again and see how it goes.
Okay, so we are now able to grab objects using our Raycast pointer with our hand. Uh, but by default right now, our hands aren't really anything. They're just empty space with a laser pointing out. So what I'm going to do right now is quickly just open up our XR rig and right click on the left hand controller and create a new 3D object and we'll just create a sphere. Okay, I'm going to remove the collider here. And I'm going to set the scale to be 0.05 along all axes right here. Okay, so we'll have just these little spheres here for our hands. I'm going to copy and paste that inside of the right hand as well, making sure to set the position to be zero. So it is centered on the hand here. And something else is that with these uh, interactable objects, you may have noticed that when I was uh, moving my hand around quite a bit, it doesn't really stick to the hand exactly. And the reason right now is because it is using the rigid body component in order to basically keep track of uh, where this object is in fixed update time. But we want to make it so that perhaps it is just sticking to it uh, solidly. Okay, basically its transform is our transform every single frame. So on the grab interactable here, what I'm going to do is go to where it says movement type and change this from kinematic to instantaneous. And this basically is like a Unity parent-child relationship, how it is basically uh, sticking to it uh, every single frame. So if I press play again, you should see that this object sticks to our hand uh, a lot better. So there we go. We can now pick up an interactive objects inside of Unity using the XR Interaction Toolkit. Now, between now and the next lesson, I want you to go ahead and just populate the scene with a bunch of various different objects, making sure to update the colliders and the attach transform positions and rotations.